So, here's a uh, tropical plants update as requested by blah blah 2542. Um, he or she is actually just looking at these guava plants. So, these are the guava trees that I grew from seed. And these two, this one and this one, are ones that I hardened off. So they never drop their leaves or anything like that. So they're doing pretty well. Uh, down there, those are just tangerine seeds, so you can ignore them for now. But these uh, guava are doing pretty well. Uh, the stem's not that thick and they're kind of wobbly, floppy. But uh, I guess over the years, they'll harden up. Uh, this one over here is uh, one that I didn't harden off it died back to a stem, but then leaves finally started growing uh, again. And this one down here is also one that I didn't harden off. And as you can see, it has no leaves except for these little buds right here, or these little leaves right here. I thought it had died, but uh, because all the leaves died, the stem got really dried up, but uh, surprise, surprise, two months later, new leaves. So, well, that just teaches you don't give up on your plants so easily. Um, another problem I have out here is the pesky squirrels. When you put your plants outside and they're on the ground or anywhere a squirrel can reach, the pesky little nut eaters will always do things like this. They'll dig in here to like, dig in your pots to like bury their nuts or whatever, or they think you put a nut there. Especially when you have just planted something, the little buggers can smell fresh dirt and they'll start digging wherever you just planted something. So you have to protect your plants against squirrels. Um, so yeah, this is what happened. I just discovered it just now. And this is one of my uh, jackfruit trees. It'll be fine because uh, I just discovered it and it there was a thunderstorm last night so the soil is really moist. I'll, uh, I'll just, I could just cover it up like that right now. And uh, Maybe I'll add more dirt later. I don't really need to reposition it, it's okay I guess. And so let's take a look at the other uh, tropical plants I have out here. So, the one right in the middle, that's a uh, jackfruit as well. And interestingly, this one is also a jackfruit. So this jackfruit has leaves like that. And this one has leaves like that. They look uh, quite different. So some plants, um, jackfruit for one, like that, and like that. It's kind of like uh, the plant native to Southern Ontario and uh, Northeastern US. Uh, I forget what it's called, but actually the leaves look similar. Uh, starts with an S. Sar, sar, uh, I can't think of the name, but uh, anyways, I will write it in the description after I look it up. So, the tropical plants are doing well during the summer, of course. Um, but since it's August 27th, 2020, it soon will be time to move them to the basement. So this is mango. And uh, these are the newest leaves. This is about three years old, I believe. Doing pretty well. And uh, yeah, it's actually really nice, thick. And here's uh, some sour sop. These seeds are about one year old at this point. So yeah, pretty good growth. And uh, they really took off once I moved them outside. This is a uh, tree of heaven. It looks uh, tropical, but uh, actually it's a temperate tree. 
I think it can also grow in the tropics, but uh, volunteer seedling, it just planted itself here in my pot with long an. Uh, so the long an is the long an is over here, the dragon's eye fruit, which is tropical. And then the Tree of Heaven is right beside it. I think I'll keep this. It's it's pretty nice. Decorative. And if you look at the bottom of the pot, there are roots coming out. We don't know whose roots those are, but uh, it's okay. Uh, I'll just leave these two together. And um, another interesting plant I have, which is uh, pretty rare, it's uh, found in Indonesia. The fruit is also really rare, but uh, I was able to find, well, it was really cool when I found it, but when I found the snake fruit at a supermarket, uh, in Markham, north of Toronto. So these, this is a palm. And this dyed got brown because I didn't harden it off, but now it has two new uh, leaf fronds coming out of the stem. And they all, like half of them died, half of them survived pretty well. Obviously the weeds do the best out here. But uh, there's a snake palm there, and here's some grass, some type of grass showing its seed. And um, I actually think that some of this grass, not this one, but maybe a different one, it was uh, harvested by indigenous peoples for... Uh, to eat like like wheat so here's a uh, tangerine tree it's uh, it's growing quite large spikes and it's planted along with this Carolina Reaper pepper plant which uh, I exposed it to a few days of frost at the beginning of the year but it has survived it has come back and has thrived and has set peppers and uh, something really funny, speaking of uh, those pesky squirrels, is that it looks like they ripped off one of these peppers, right? It looks like a juicy apple that they, that they could eat. And uh, they ripped into it and then they left it here on the floor. You can actually see a piece of it over there. And... Uh, yeah, they, uh, the squirrels didn't expect the uh, world's hottest pepper. So I would have liked to catch that on video. That would have been really funny. And so the other tropical plant which I uh, deal in, which I love, is the uh, Bodhi tree here. And uh, I have some here and some uh, elsewhere. But uh, the Bodhi tree are really tough trees and they survive well in all manner of conditions. I got one growing in like an old peanut tin and uh, they do really well outside of course during the summer. And this one is um, Calancho Pinada, Pinada which is a plant, not a tree, a plant, tropi uh, native to the tropical Caribbean and um, it's a succulent and you can see that <clears throat> some of it's uh, just a leaf that dropped here has started growing or a piece of stem and same back back there and uh, this is mulberry it's probably red mulberry or a hybrid between red and white mulberry, but they just pop up all over 
my yard. I'll show you one that's over here growing by the side of the house. Beside the uh, grapevine, the riverbank grape that is growing up the side of the house. But this is a uh, mulberry as well. And I, I know some people, they don't like plants growing by the side of their house. They think it'll, you know, ruin the foundation and perhaps it will, but uh, it's okay. There's a lot of uh, water going into my basement anyway when it rains heavily, so, so whatever. And it's not finished, so I'm gonna have this mulberry and it's, I'm gonna let it grow up the side of the house as well. They call that espalier, which is making a tree grow on a 2D plane up the side of your house or a wall or something like that. So that'll be really cool too. Um, and the grape will continue to grow as well. And on this side, we have aloe vera. And look at that another mulberry growing with the aloe vera that'll have to go inside in the winter though and uh, oh here we have some some succulents uh, this glass obviously has no drainage so the soil is really wet but I put it behind this bigger one so that they would, uh, instead of hardening them off, they could just get a little bit of sun. Like they were right in that corner, which is shaded by the um, Dracania marginata. And so they would get only a little bit of sun. But now that they've been outside for like two weeks, they can go and get more direct sunlight. Again, Calancho pinata, pinata with the uh, Ikea Dracania marginata. Here's the uh, grass again. And again, look at this. I put some cuttings here and a squirrel got to it again. Very pesky sometimes. And a bunch of other uh, succulents and um, I'm not sure what this succulent is because I'm not too uh, too much of a succulent uh, I don't know succulent uh, succulent gardener but um, it's uh, it's flowering and a lot of people do not know or do not make the connection that succulents will actually flower uh, we were surprised too I guess some very beautiful flowers and it looks like this one has some kind of uh, oh an ant an ant has just made its exit and it's probably like what is this wonderful nectar I've never tasted such exotic nectar because it's a uh, obviously not a plant you'd find around this uh, this climate and more succulents this is a uh, not a succulent this is a uh, honey locust so it grew from seed I'm not sure how the seed got into this succulent pot but uh, it did Maybe by, maybe I dropped it, I don't know. Definitely, probably not a squirrel. But anyways, it's growing well. It's only um, started growing this growing season. There's avocado, the only avocado that the squirrels did not destroy. And it probably needs more light. Perhaps against this fence is not so good. And here's this, uh, these two spider plants. They started off as one plant. I think this is the older one and that's the newer one. And they just, they're very tough plants. Like you could, you could water them like once a month and they'd be fine. And uh, if you take a look at this trailer, so this spider plants, they send out 
trailing vines just like that and then those trailing vines they, they grow just fine like this in the air well this is really going crazy I guess it's pretty moist over there but if they do find uh, dirt they will send out roots so this this trailer is already rooted down here as you can see and um, it's I'm pulling on it it's pretty firmly stuck in there and I, I do believe that about three weeks ago it wasn't rooted but now it is and so that concludes the update on the tropical plants hope you guys are having a, uh, a great end of summer and they're not doing anything dangerous and are um, just waiting until next year when everything will be somewhat back to normal so uh, take care everyone.